Right out for the first time in 2022, the New Zealand show is back. Kem Bray joins me, but not for the first time for the year, but welcome back, Kem. Yeah, no, it's great to be here, Paul. We'll be at this the 28th of uh, February, but, um, you know, <laughs> Chinese New Year, I suppose. Is that what you're calling it, Paul? That's what I call it, mate. This show is proudly brought to you by Woodland Stud Harasta Trotters and NZB Standard Breads, which is why I have to put up with you all the time because they're the only one. You're the only one that gets to be front and centre for me, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a silly bastard to keep hands from the phone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Listen, we taste we taste some jokes, but we're trying to do something to promote people um, through the year um, and go from there. I've actually got the Arden. Uh, farms had on that was kindly sent to me by Johnny Stiven. Uh, we did some things for Southern Red, Southern Red, and also the Brecken Farms shirt on. Have absolutely no qualms wearing paraphernalia for people and promoting them, um, and that's what I want to do. Um, we want to catch up with a few of the other people. Cam's giggling; he's got something to come out of his mouth. I don't reckon I want it, but that's okay. We'll no, wait no, and no, see no, 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 no. I got nothing for you. I got nothing for you. Oh, I'm only disappointed that you won't wear the cowboy hat for the New Zealanders. Is that all you're after? God, he yeah, like, that is great. He like he, he's a bit of a rat for the cowboy hat. He just wants to keep <laughs> it coming. Um, anyway, it'll be all right. It'll it'll be coming out again soon. So don't worry if it if it if it markets at markets. Don't you worry about that. It'll be fine. Rightio. In all seriousness, mate, we're capping off. Um, your yearling sales have wound up um, at the minute. Although your thoroughbred one's about to start today, you have. Uh, an important, important day. This won't go out until Tuesday, but uh, we're recording this Monday morning, but there's a fair bit going on in your world um, as we speak. Yeah, so today uh, today at 5 o'clock is the last day for people to become eligible for the uh, Harness Million Race Series. Uh, so that's obviously one of the richest age group um, faturity events in New Zealand. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's busy, busy just getting on the phone and getting in touch with everyone, making sure they have made their decision as to whether they want to pay up or not. So, yeah, it does keep us reasonably busy. And the prize money on offer though for those races? Uh, so the two, it's 250, 250, 75. Oh, sorry, 250, 275. Colts, yep. fillies, trotters. Yep. So very, um, very important for people to you know be aware of. Obviously, it would have closed by now uh, by the time we put it out. But these race futurities, and I'm going to catch up with Martin in a minute, Martin, Martin Pearson in a second, talk about the size stakes. Um, over there, they're super important. These programs for the, the betterment of the racing industry. Full stop. Well, it does when you, you, you're looking for people to, to to invest in a horse at, at yearling sale time because these uh, fraturity events, not necessarily the sale series, but you, you look at your you know the size stakes, Nivelli R, Caduceus, all these ones here in New Zealand, they unlock a, a, a Pandora's box of of wealth. Um, you know, for guys that do buy horses, uh, and and there's a but like they have in Australia, and with your Vic Red and, and Breeders' Crown, you can go in these conditional heats and bits and pieces. So you really, if you're looking to get a return on investment, you really need to have them paid up for a number of these events. So I did a uh, podcast with Ray Green, what you look for in a yearling. It was one of the key things that he did look at. He said he goes down to the bottom of the pedigree pages and sees what they mm. are eligible for. A backhander for the Breeders' Crown and where the Breeders' Crown is situated at the minute now, he finds that... Uh, irrelevant if they're paid up for it or not he doesn't worry about uh the breeze ground which is something i think the australians over here need to look at um and be aware of it because he's not going to miss out on the rich new zealand size stakes which is why he won't um worry about the breeders ground yeah and i suppose for someone who makes a living out of buying and selling uh, younger tried horses. Well, they of of course they're going to look at the breeders ground the Vic bred the new south wales breeders challenge all those australian ones because if, you're not, if they're not eligible for them, they're all of a sudden you're cutting them out of a big group of races over there too. So I've got to stress to New Zealand breeders, it's very important to be paid up for New Zealand size, size stakes and, and their additional um, partners. But I really do think if you're looking to sell horses at the yearling sales, we do sell a number of horses to Australia. And depending on where the stallion stands, if they're eligible for you know, the Vic Bread, the Breeders' Crown, the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge, the Bathurst Series, all those things, for what they cost, it is gets a lot more people looking at your horses. Um, we've been down the line, we have these on-farm tours, and et cetera, et cetera. When they're not eligible for those races, a lot of guys can't even get out of the van because they're dealing with, dealing with people where they're either buying them, breaking them in, developing them, selling them, or they're looking to race for significant uh, money. If they can't do that, well, they're not going to look at your horse, unfortunately. No, definitely not. And I'm going to catch up with that with Martin, but I think there was 70 Australian horses this year paid up for your New Zealand size stakes. 
which is another reason you want to pay up for it because it's actually growing. So that is another part from, from the Kiwi point of view, it is actually growing. But I will co- cross off, off off with that with Martin. Um, a wrap of the yielding sales, Cam, um, a quick one. Across the board, you must be absolutely tickled pink with the results that you were able to achieve over the four days, five days. Yeah, no, everything, four all days. the indicators are up. Four days, yeah, everything's up. Uh, Auckland sale, we started on the on the Sunday, Sunday, yeah, it didn't start out a great day with the weather, um, but uh, the sale ring of the action was hot, and um, we came back to Christchurch the following day, had the trotting session, which... Um, did sort of fall a wee bit flat, but uh, at the end of the day, we, we picked up again on the Tuesday with the pacing session and, and then and then followed into Wednesday with our averages rising, our median rising, our turnovers, everything, clearance rate, the whole nine yards is all up. And I'm quite pleased to say that even post the completion of the yielding sale series, those two, three, four days we had post that, um, you know, like I was that busy, I couldn't even answer Paul Campbell's, you know, 1,500 phone calls a day. Um, we sold a lot of horses, and we will be very close uh, when we cut off the figures as of tonight, when we do the Harness Million. We'll be very close to 80, if not uh, 80% clearance, if not a little bit higher, um, which I think is very good under the current circumstances, uh, uh, under the current uh, restrictions we had. And um, I, I think it's just an absolute, you know, pleasure and, and an absolute congratulations to everyone involved vendors and purchasers alike. It was, it was indeed. I was going to go one way. I'll go the other way. Uh, your first day, your main players, Woodland Stud, Alabar, Brecken Farms. Um, the, the, the engagement, I suppose, you got on that Sunday was just astronomical. Um, I had people texting me. I was watching it, but I had people texting me while it was going on. Uh, you had horses being sold to North America. It's a, it, it's a game changer now, the way these sales are going. And I think p- going forward, people must be aware of it and, and start really, really start planning now um, for 24, uh, tw- sorry, a year's time, 12 months' time. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, when, when we look at it as a business compared to our uh, thoroughbred parent company, you know, we're starting to look with averages, you know, close to, 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 to 50,000 um, and clearance rates and, and turnovers and bits and medians where they are. We're looking very thoroughbred esque now in comparison to, you know, five, 10 years ago. Uh, and we are selling to America. We're selling to Australia. Um, we're, we're, we're selling to uh, American investment in New Zealand, uh, where they're basically, i.e., they're going to race horses here in New Zealand. Same with Australians in New Zealand. Um, and not only that, you know, they, we, we're selling them to guys for, just to go straight up to America as well. So we've seen a, a dramatic increase in investment from America, um, which is great. But again, we, we, it's a worldwide sales. We've got a worldwide catalogue. Um, like most of the Australasian horses do because they perform so well in America. Yep, definitely. Um, I'll change hats now. We went to the South Island and we'll, we'll touch on the trotters perhaps at the end and, and we might make it a bit of a, a questionnaire. Maybe some people that are, are watching might have their own thoughts on, on the trotters. But um, I'll put the Arden, but Southern Red, Southern Red, they have their bus tour and, and likes to be able to think outside of the square. They contacted yourself and I and we did a virtual tour which I think worked. When you look at the figures, I, th- I don't think necessarily we sold those horses, but we didn't do them any harm anyway. Um, but going forward, perhaps they're the sort of things that we have to look at. You know, have the bus tour, have the virtual tours as well, though, so you can reach a, a larger audience. I think there was over a thousand people had viewed that before the sale had started. So, you know, people mm. would. They, it's not the sort of thing that you go into if you're just looking to to watch something random. It actually said that it was a virtual yearling tour of the Southern Red, Southern Red horses. So. You know, going forward, you know, I'll pump my own tyres up, but I think they're the sorts of things that 12 months' time people must be across and, and be ready for. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, got touch wood um, that we don't uh, we don't have to go through this sort of scenario again. Um, but, look, at the end of the day, uh, as you've said all along, with the engagement we got on that tour, um, it's not to say that it, can, it won't hurt anyone ever again. Um, it's just added another element to the whole thing, really. Um so, yeah, I think it was all we could do in the current climate, and I think it worked for what it was. Um, like, it was, it's a hell of a lot better than what, if nothing had happened at all. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with how it came up, um, and, and I'm pleased with the engagement that you've obviously said. You know, we've had over a 1,000 views leading into the sale, which is fantastic. Yeah, definitely, and it just, it just reaches a different audience that can't get there for that bus trip. I'm hoping, like hell, I'm there for that bus trip next year. <laughs> I think it's been teased and dangled in front of me for two years, but I'm hoping I can get there for it, that's for sure. 
Yeah, no, well, we're, as you say, we, we'd love every Australian to get here, you know. Um, it's it's a bit of a uh, marquee event on the, on the Australasian harness racing calendar, and, um, you know, we'd love to see uh, more and more um, engagement from you guys, or more and more people of you guys coming back to New Zealand. You know, it's been, a, as I say, a couple of years before we've seen a lot of you, so... Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully, touch wood again um, that we can get you here for the um, the Weanling sale in May with a bit of luck. It's a 50-50 at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, but look, I'm having daily conversations with the Prime Minister to try and uh, rectify that for you, Paul. <laughs> You've got that picture with your hands in the hands in the air. The Trotters, um, you, you touched on it just there before, Cam, and this one of probably one of the questions. You know, maybe some people out there have a harebrained idea. I'm happy for them to throw it into into the comments, not derogatory by any stretch, but just whether people maybe themselves have an idea as to why um, the trotters didn't work this year because they are growing. One idea that I was told was per- perhaps that the marketplace is not as great as what the paces are um, to, to be able to sell them. It's um, pretty much New Zealand, Victoria, and then we need the rest of Australia to catch up because um, the rest of them are a long way behind. They are catching. Um, and maybe that's the sort of thing that this might be a blip this year and going forward once racing keeps improving. But um, it's just a little bit of a, I suppose, a frustrating one for people who have invested in the trotters and, and rightfully so because they are the quickest growing you know, part of our sport. But um, we need the whole part to sort of grow right across um, Australasia. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a number of factors in it. Um, I do believe that um, it's hard to, to, to narrow in on one factor um, so to speak, I think the the breeding industry has basically outgrown its racing partners. Um, we've had significant increase in that trotting sale over a short period of time. We've now we've had a lot of num- number number of new people coming into the market. Um, we also found that quite a number of our big, large, larger, I should say, larger, trotting stables were unable to play because they're getting so many coming in the gate anyway. Yep. Um, because obviously, you know, we're selling colts, they're, they're keeping fillies or, or vice versa. Th- they've got to be trained somewhere. Um, and, and the other thing, as you touched on, is the marketplace for on sale of horses. Um, you know, uh, I think the value that we've been selling to over the last few years has l- lifted the expectation, I think, of, of uh, quite a few of our vendors. And in, in the cold reality of day, if you were to go and invest in a trotter at the fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar mark, it, it turned out to be a fair trotter, and then you wanted to sell it. You know, you, it's going to be hard to ad- obtain anything more than sort of fifty as a going concern to someone into Victoria. And it, that 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 alone, really, you can sell it. You can only really sell it into Victoria. Otherwise, you're looking at Queensland, uh, New South Wales, or WA, which the money's um, is not there for those sort of horses. The, the, the money, it, it's more the, the races. They get one race a week where they can run. So if you're going to spend $50,000 for a, a, a trotter and... Uh, well, it's hard to make it work, isn't it? Yeah, and there's already, you know, like um, we'll take a line, say, through Tornado Valley over here who has, you know, now finished. In, if he was racing in New South Wales or Queensland and is dominant, he'd be like the king of swing um, there. So it's hard to, to race against a horse like that here in Australia because we... Sorry, in Victoria, because we have so many different races... Um, mm. You're able to you're able to dodge a horse like him with an up and yeah. coming coming horse until you meet in the good races. So, I think yeah. that's you know it, it's possibly just a a little bit of a timing. Maybe in two years' time, everyone's going to say, "Why were people just nervous about the trotters?" There's no reason to be nervous about the trotters. It just might be you know we're just outgrowing or growing a little bit quicker than what we can control just at the minute. I think it's just and, and it's just a realignment of the market, Paul. I think um, yep. you know we, we we've had extreme sales over the last few years where um, we, we've gone guns blazing. To be fair, um, with a number of hundred thousand plus dollar plus lots, um, and we've had some sensationally bred horses come through this catalogue this year, which um, you know got virtually no money for, which is a, which is a shame. But um, I think the trotting gate more so than ever comes down. A lot of it comes down to, to type as well. Um, and, and not to say they weren't, but possibly weren't the type and the pedigree just didn't possibly match up to the point where they're going to get the big, big, big money. Um, so I think it's a number of factors. You know, you can also you know t- have a look at the stallions. We had a we had a, a large percentage of our catalogue by one stallion. Um, whether that had an effect or not, I don't know. I think it's too it's too early to tell on that. You know that that front. But I think just an, an, all those factors combined just made that made for a you know, expectation versus um, reality was just probably a little bit out of, out of sight. 
It's one of those ones I was just thinking as you were saying that too, Kevin, you are saying about the Australians not being able to get over there. You still had Australian investors, but a lot of those investors are pacing guys like Gene Feast, mm. um, you know, uh, Summit Bloodstock and the likes, although they are dabbling in a few, few predominantly they are pacing investors. Um, I was going to, I can't think of his name all of a sudden, uh, Ultimate Racing um, and the likes. They are pacing people um the, the yeah. trotting people were the, probably the people that would have got on the plane and gone across there and had a look and yeah. then and then being able to say hang on this is great value this horse i'll buy this one and bring yeah. it home so you probably missed that because they weren't they weren't on their radar because they're like well we can't get there so we're not going to invest exactly yeah no, i think there's a number of issues uh well not not issues but a number of factors playing into it yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to hold you much longer, mate, but um, terrific racing Saturday night at uh, Menangle. Uh, racing, you know, right across the board. There's some great trotting racings in, in Victoria with the uh, Lynn McPherson Memorial Night um, with Team Teal. I went through the results in New Zealand, and I'll touch on these with Martin in a second. Two races had no New Zealand influence in the uh, in the winning at uh, Menangle. That's huge, isn't it? Yeah, like right. on a derby night. It's huge, yeah. It, it, it really is. Um, you had some good winners. I've actually got them here. I'll tell you the one that um, you know, Promised Land did. It was this horse here, Smooth, Smooth Bay Heart, I'll, I'll go with, or Bat. It was by Sun Beach somewhere out of Shout Aloud, which was an arm row operative mare, so you can't claim anything there. It was bred by Brooklyn Lodge. So obviously you had a terrific winner of a great a great old horse, Cash and Flow, uh, win, won the first for Brecken Farm. So I don't know if you noticed I got the shirt yeah. on. Um, Might have said that. Um, then you had Promised Land, who's by Better's Delight. Spirit of St. Louis, hasn't he been a revelation? Like, he just keeps getting better and better over there and uh, doing a great job for everyone involved. He is doing a good job. He's doing a great job for the side. He's probably the pin-up horse of the side now, too, um, which, you know, puts him on the mark as a, as a real, you know, he's a, he's a real contender, um, which I you know he didn't have the best of sales here in New Zealand. I know that he didn't get a large book of horses, um, I think, from, from the last breeding season, but end of the day it's going to be the old uh, saying and you know you're going to end up with 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 limited opportunities and there's going to be a desire to want them so it's good on those people for supporting the horse oh absolutely he had a full book here in australia and i think he's already nearly booked out here in australia as well the champ king of swing i don't care what anyone says they say oh he's just a leader he proved them wrong the other day he's just a ripper horse isn't he Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, absolute sensation. Stylish Memphis, how she didn't get into the uh, Miracle Mile. Has, uh, that's why you and I have no hair, I reckon. So it just seems a very, very odd one, that, that's for sure. Um, I'm mm. sure Connections are really scratching their head over that one. Uh, Just Hope, who won the Oaks, uh, of course, by Better's Delight. Uh, what else? Tim's a Trooper, this was the other one. He was by Tin Tin in a... Oh, well... So I said he didn't, but Tintin in America, well, he's a New Zealand side horse. He's uh, stood in New Zealand, so we could probably give him that one, couldn't we? We can actually say, so there's only the one that didn't have the New Zealand leap of faith is by Better's Delight and Major Perry um, is out of Katy Perry, of course, by being by Art Major was bred in New Zealand and raced over here. Got actually quite a few uh, New Zealanders in the naming of that horse too. So huge, I think from a New Zealand point of view, I think that sort of um, you know, basically stands the test of time. When the big races are on, you guys are right up to the four arches. Yeah, and it, and it probably does, does have a pretty good snapshot of the industry here in New Zealand too, that there's a number of horses that are either being sold off to Australian interests or raced in Australia um, because of, you know, number of different factors but I think you know that's something we're seeing more and more of as our age group stars once they get to four-year-old and older um, they're on the plane most of them um, and the way the season is now we're obviously you're going to get horses flow backwards and forwards across the Tasman so yep definitely uh, very quick I'll let you go but uh, Nigel will be very happy with um, Spellbound she was sensational it's as good a run as I've seen yeah. in New Zealand I think yeah, sorry not in New Zealand at Menang they don't come from that far back and that wide um, and take ground off them like that She's doing a good job too, isn't she? You know, we've got one uh, reasonably happy office administrator here who has a she here um, yeah. uh, in, in the horse, Al Rach, um, who quite often you have to remind her that it's even raced. <laughs> um, um, but no, it's good. It's good. It's great to see them waving the flag for us. Yep, no, definitely. Have a lot of fun. Cam, thank you. Won't be the last time you and I talk. We will talk um, next week and the week after we'll start getting a few more things up and going. I'm going to try and catch up with Martin very quickly now. Uh, just make sure people are aware one of the size, but also there is a sale coming up. One more sale coming up here. Or sorry, I shouldn't say that. There's actually two. There's the APG sale, which will be in Sydney next uh, weekend. I'm not sure exactly what time it commences, but it is definitely on Sunday. Um, and then Nutrien, who I obviously wear quite a few hats for, um, on April 3rd, um, and they have a big sale, and there's quite a lot of interest in that form from the New Zealand point of view. So 
Mate, thanks very much for your time, and uh, we look forward to doing a few things. We're going to get some more uh, random people, I think, people that have achieved things over the journey. I must say, actually, Cam, there was a young girl that had her first winner the other night at Alexander Park, too. Um, oh, yeah, Monica Ranger, I think it was, wasn't that's it? That's exactly well done. I couldn't remember yeah. her name, but congratulations to her. That's that's terrific. It's a it's an odd one there. We, we never used to be able to drive um, at a Metro race meeting until you'd driven a racetrack, no matter what sort of class it was, unless you've driven five winners. It's one of those things that's dropped off here in Australia now. It can happen. Sean O'Sullivan, he won his first race at Melton. Um, obviously, you can do that as well in New Zealand, by the sounds. Yeah, but well, obviously, I didn't know that, but no, obviously, you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's what I, I think that's... We need to get our major tracks back. has been a bit secret, but that's another hobby horse of mine. We'll worry about that a bit later on. Cam, thank you very much. Um, NZB, when's the Weanling sale? 26th of May. Alrighty, don't forget that one, but we'll be touching on that a little bit closer. And, uh, yep, I'll, uh, we'll catch up at uh, probably next week if I don't catch up with you during the week, mate. Well, mate, mate, nothing sure. You'll ring me, buddy, within a quarter of an hour. This guy, that's finishing, I'd say. <laughs> right, Martin Pearson joins me. Fair to say this is about take 10, but uh, we've got everything sorted this time, Martin. Even the earphones are on the right way, mate. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Thanks for your help with that. Really appreciate it. <laughs> We tried to do this over the weekend and uh, technology wasn't playing a big part for us. So uh, good of Cam Bray to leave his setup set up for us so we can um, have a little bit of a, a quick touch off. I was just, we've had a good touch, conversation with Cam off the back of the um, sales at NZB and, and the strength of those um, just recently. Um, from a, your point of view with the size stakes board and, and being in charge, that you must be wrapped with the, the results and how they, you know, everything is tracking, albeit there was a couple of little glitches, I suppose, um, along the way. Oh, well, nothing's ever perfect, but look, the sale was remarkably strong. You know, with COVID again and Omicron's full swing in New Zealand now, we're all a little bit nervous heading in, but the horses sold and, you know, you've seen the figures from Cam and NZB, they're all heading in the right direction. There's always, you know, the hard luck stories and the trotters struggled a little bit in Christchurch. Um, but at the end of the day, overall, wonderful sale. From a size stakes point of view, look, my job is to get people to pay up and to nominate for these races, making them more commercial going forward. Um, so that's always heading in the right direction. Um, getting into the race, though, it's a slightly different story. But, hey, let's not be negative. The reality is everything's headed in the right direction. I'm hearing this morning the breeding numbers have held up in New Zealand at reasonable levels as well. So given we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're in pretty good shape, but we can't afford to be complacent either. Two years ago, especially here in Australia, there was a major influx of breeding. So that's that's actually good that in, they, they've, I think in Australia, it's pretty similar. They haven't increased, but they haven't decreased either. But so by the sounds of things, that's what's happened in New Zealand as well. Yeah, I just heard that this one from Brad Reid. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, the birth date was a positive thing. I think a lot of breeders have supported that. It's going to take two or three years for the benefits to play out, though, on the racetrack. And I suppose, look, we'll find out we're right or wrong. But there's much bigger things at play in the world than harness racing, so we should be pretty comfortable where we're at. But at the same time, we've got to be non-complacent and keep looking for innovative ways for forward to ensure participation remains strong and hopefully grows. We are, in Australia, we're effectively um, one year ahead of you because we introduced it that one year ahead. I can tell you there's a lot of positivity here. There was one negative part. We raced right over the Christmas break and everything else like that um, because we were able to. Um, the participants found it very hard to be having group racing, you know, through that Christmas New Year's period because it you know, meant they couldn't have even a lay day because there was so much pressure pressure on. But the rest of the package just worked sensational. I went to Horsham Trots yesterday. Unfortunately, we got flooded out uh, midway through the afternoon. But all in all, the racing has been so good because it's a great time of year to get people to the races to watch our feature racing now and also coming out of winter um, next year. Oh, yeah, we spoke the other day, Paul, we'll take one of this, you know, the autumn carnival coming out in the North Island. You know, we've got the race, and, and those slots have been fully sold, so that's great. And, you know, what started this conversation was the strength of the sales and the number of size stakes eligible horse you've got in your size, in your sales, I should say. You know, going forward, that autumn carnival was designed and thinking about trotters especially that might be coming across for the Row Cup, and there might be a three-year-old trotter now worthy of bringing across on the plane to the size stakes final, which is also at Alexandra Park. So that autumn carnival this year will be just a little bit limited because of the COVID, but the horses will be there. And going forward, let's hope that that North Island Carnival looks like Albion Park does in the middle of winter, where it becomes Australasian. And again, I'm sort of recalling what we spoke about the other day, but you know, the Inter Dominions are sort of battling a little bit for one reason or another. If we can get that trans-Tasman rivalry going at, say, Auckland, and that Autumn Carnival, and then on to Albion Park, that's what gets me as an enthusiast uh, interested in our sport again. 
you, you say there about rivalry um, and the alliance, uh, you know, and I agree with you, but the flip side of it is just to be able to work together would be so good as well, oh. wouldn't, it? wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just, it would just be so... Um... Oh, I give up. I give up. You and I have spoken since I got to meet you about Australia and being strong. Now, you can't get your states to agree. We have some difficulties here between the North and the South Island, and it does my head in because I'm not only an administrator, but I've got some skin in the game. And ultimately, it just gets too hard, and you can see why people that maybe lack the passion or drive or as the world changes, things become more important than harness racing. We've got to be very careful that we don't lose the core interest we have in our sport and try and stop the you know the decline and then grow it. Yep. And working together as Australasia is the only way forward. We're too small, not only in market share, but also where we live in the part of the world, to not work more closely together. But hey, whether that happens in our lifetime, I'm not sure. It'll happen. You and I will make sure it does, Martin. We, 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 we're yeah. keen. We'll say there before about the size stakes, and I am here to give a plug to um, you know one of my sales going forward and one of my sponsors. But quickly, I believe about two years ago, there was only three horses nominated for your size stakes over there that were in Australia for the New Zealand size stakes off the back of um, last year with the uh, Better's Delight, our Golden Goddess Colt selling for 180000 to Gene Feast. A lot more people become aware. There was, I think you said, 70 or 70-plus horses here in Australia that were nominated for last year? Yeah, I forget the exact number now. It was on my notes from the other day, but um, certainly a big number. Obviously, Yabby Dam, or Harada Trotters, call yep. them what you will, wonderful supporters of New Zealand Size Stakes and previous sponsor of mine. They've got about 24 nominated, I think. Um, ben Stud, of course, on the back of the Golden Goddess, and some others as well that aren't necessarily going through this particular sale. But at the end of the day, as I said, it's about yearlings being eligible for the New Zealand size stakes. And therefore, when you get the crans, the barriers, the Mark Purdens, et cetera, that might be in Australia on different carnivals, go into the sales. If they see a New Zealand size stakes eligible horse, it probably gets more than a second look. So the numbers have grown. Um, and obviously, Pat's got the biggest number this year of 24, I think. I counted up the other day. Yep. So um, that's a growing market. And the same with the Pacers as well for the, uh, the Neville Hour Phillies. They're also eligible for the Neville Hour Phillies. So if you buy a size stakes eligible filly, I've usually talked them into the um, the Caduceus and the Neville Hour Phillies as well. So, again, you've got the option to race them in New Zealand if you so chose, like a Gene Feast, or for New Zealanders to bring them back over to the side of the world. And it is key. Um, Ray Green, I spoke to Ray the other day, did a podcast uh, with him. I asked him how much emphasis he puts on to the bottom of the pedigree page, and he says a lot, like as in so what they're eligible for um, and their eligibility. But he did say he put a... a pretty good covenant he, the breeders crown to him now is irrelevant from a new zealand point of view because of where it fits right in time with your new zealand size stakes so a gentleman like ray green who has always been very you know keen buyer and keen about buying and the rest paying up for these futurities is key and getting the numbers in for them and keeping these race series strong which is purely by weight of numbers is how you'll keep them strong it's one of the key things for anyone out there who is a person wanting to sell horses at yearling sales next year and in the future. They've got to be right onto it, don't they? They've got to be eligible. You pay a service fee, whatever stallion you chose, a fairly good service fee. You've raised your horse. The more the eligibility that horse is, look, it's like buying tickets in a raffle. The more tickets you got, the more likely you are to win. So stake, I remember when Graham Pearson many, many, many years ago, no relation, unfortunately, took undercover lover mm -hmm. to America, um, you know, and had to pay a lot of late entries into various futurity systems. Um, okay, so we don't have that suite of races, but you look at a Vic Bread cult, so if you breed to American Ideal in New Zealand, Vic Bread, obviously New Zealand size stakes, Breeders' Crown, uh, anything you can get into, the costs are relatively small at the front end, but you racing it or the buyers of the yearling sales gives that more options. Then there's the bigger stables, and Ray's a good example, or Mark and Barry, those big stables, Crayon. Maybe the you know the best one might stay here for New Zealand size stakes, and the second tier, a very good horse on its own right, might go across to Australia to have a crack at your series. So they can't race in everything, but it gives people options. And the more options you got, well, it's not rocket science, is it? No, and a little bit of that was spellbound. Um, myself and Cam touched on her before and about how great a run she was in New Zealand on the, uh, sorry, in Menangle on the weekend. She basically came over because she was about the third best mare and she couldn't chase those other good mares. Now, those other mares have come over here, Amazing Dream, who's now left for America and uh, Better Twist are now over here. But she's still able to be competitive in good racing and being able to avoid them. But in Australia, we don't want to take all your good New Zealand horses. We want the racing to be able to stay there. So you don't want horses like Spellbound necessarily leaving if, if the better ones are leaving to keep your racing product going. So being eligible for all these races is an incentive to keep them in New Zealand and keep growing the product in New Zealand. Yeah, it is. Look, there's a slightly different mindset over here, though. If you don't think you've got the best one, you're really looking to get out. And look, we're not going to stop that. I was just looking through the nominations this morning for the Auckland meeting on Friday night, and there's some fairly low numbers there. But 
because the market's so strong in Australia, which is both good and bad. So it's good for the breeder that they can get it back and they can turn the horses over looking for the next good one. But at the same time, it does make the numbers that we've got available to race at times a bit smaller. And that's a challenge because you know what drives the sport. It's turnover. So it's a fine line. But Spellbound's a great result. I remember talking to Nigel about it and I think I was one of the ones that perhaps thought it might have been a good idea to roll the dice over there. You've got a bigger country, more opportunities to race. You can spread them out. They can still make a buck without racing each other head to head at one or two tracks in New Zealand. I don't know how we can ever compete with that but it's not about competing it's about actually opening people's eyes up where can they best race their horses to get the returns to reinvest and reinvesting in, in their it's back to Australasian harness racing how do we get a product down here that becomes a bit more you know partnership rather than racing against because selling in New Zealand's good I know for a fact I sell and to pay the bills that's how we work but at the same time, I'm very concerned, and this is outside my brief here today, so I apologise for going down this path, but if we don't have enough horses to race in this country going forward, field size gets smaller, turnover reduces, stakes get smaller. It's a never-declining circle. So that's the worry we've got, um, and that's the one downside of the birthday change, I suppose, that now people are going to have to wait a lot longer for those four- and five-year-olds, and it's hard to wait these days. It's quite expensive. It, um, it is, and one of the reasons I did want to get on is make people aware of the Abbey Dam Farms who have 24 lots available, and they're all paid up for the New Zealand size stakes. There's 31 horses in the uh, nutrient sale catalogue that are, um, are eligible. Some of those horses were pinhooked as weanlings, and we'll touch on that in, yes. in a minute, that are yep. over here. Um, they've been offered up so they could actually go back there as well. But you say about changing the numbers and, and the, the declining numbers and the likes. For us, the trotters and Yabby Dam Farms, the quality of trotters that they actually are able to breed, the numbers, they just keep winning races here. I think they won three races that they didn't train them in on, over the weekend on our biggest stage. Like, so horses like Elect to Live, they they breed quality horses that just continually go on. Pat has actually got a New Zealand travel rebate. So anyone in New Zealand that's thinking, well, maybe we need to stop this decline of horses leaving, be able to reinvest. It is basically $500 per $10,000 spent is how it actually works out. Capped at $5,000, sorry, $500 per $10,000 spent. And it's capped at 5,000. So if you spend 10 grand, he'll put 500 towards a plane rebate. Um, if you spend 100, you'll get 5,000 towards it. If you spend over 100, God bless you, uh, but you'll only get the $5,000 rebate for, for that. But this is a way people out there got to think outside the square and think differently. Buy quality filly, eligible for the New Zealand size stakes, go over there, race in a lesser pool, and then in a couple of years' time be able to put that mare maybe through back through the sales and be able to change it up. We need people to think differently, and I think this incentive that Pat's given, especially with that plane rebate, that is not ex as expensive to send them back over, is very key. Oh, there's no doubt. And Pat is a big picture thinker, and you've only got to go that with his breeding, you know, the stallions he's brought down and the mares he's invested in. When you're involved in harness racing at any level, it's not about today and tomorrow. You've almost got to have a five to ten year plan at any one point and change it up all the time. Um, easier said than done at times, but you've got to think outside the square. You know, the cut and paste that used to work 30 years ago just is not relevant in today's society. Yep, I, I totally agree. And I think a lot of people, I, I understand why people do sell their horses, but sometimes maybe just sit back and wait a little bit and just say, you know, follow, see the lie of the land and see how things are going. I and mean, you might be able to race them in, into some better races and maybe make more money. But at the end of the day, do what we all do harness racing for. Have a bit of fun as well along the way. Oh, and it's a dream. And whether you're gambling a dollar each way or if you're breeding five or six mares, it's all a gamble. It's all relative. But um, I think any gambling, this is my train, you've got to have some line of thought. It's not just throwing money at something. So think about what you're doing. Why are you breeding the horse in the first instance? Are you breeding to race? Are you breeding to sell commercially to sale? Or as a racehorse or whatever? Have a plan. So Pat's now giving you an opportunity to breed to those horses um, or buy those horses at the sales, and at least the plan starts off on the front foot. Yep, definitely, but we need more people to reinvest. We want young people in the industry. We want people to be able to have fun in New Zealand as well because we need, like, from my point of view, we need New Zealand flying. Um, we want good horses over there that our Australian horses want to go over and take on and be able to beat, to sort of say, no, 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 we beat you, but right at the minute it just seems to be everyone's very comfortable in themselves, so we want to be able to build the product in New Zealand, build the product in Australia, and uh, take on the rest of the world, show the rest of the world that we've got this world-class product. Because we already know we've got it. We've proven that with our paces. Our trotters are light years behind, but are catching up at that same speed. Um, so we're heading in the right direction. Um, and that's why I come back to that autumn carnival in the North Island. You know, a lot of people say, why is it in Auckland? Well, the reality is there's a direct flight from Australia into Auckland. So that's yep. why it's there. But the race has been fully subscribed. So that's a great thing for the paces. If we can get that trotting carnival to grow at the same level, um, 
and those Sire Stakes eligible horses. Comes back to that. Pat's made his horses Sire Stakes eligible. For you buy a trotter now, out of that sale, it can be back across in Auckland as a three-year for a Sire Stakes final. And if you've got one good enough, like the Gaths, for example, might have one good enough for the Row Cup, two on the plane and away you go. Team up with one of the pacing crew that's coming over for the race and those other support races, like the Auckland. Who would have thought the Auckland Trotting Cup is going to be a support race, but it'll be a support race to a $900,000 slot race. Yep. So there's real opportunities. And then we've got a carnival that people take interest in. They engage in our sport. They have a bet and away we go. And they have fun, Martin, which is the other part we want well, to make sure, make, make sure people have. I'm going to let you go because I know it's a very, very busy day there. But very quickly, King is swinging as far as a passionate New Zealand person and a person that just uh, loves you. Really. You must be so, I suppose, chuffed, proud. Like, I mean, they say it's his last year, and I think sometimes people expect him to probably fail from time to time. He's in career best form. He's run the overnight. Oh, he's been an amazing horse. I'm a massive fan of rock and roll Hanover, um, which not many New Zealanders are for one reason or another. So it's great to see that he's left a true champion, I suppose you could say. Um, obviously, a wonderful horse for Ray Green and his team. Might have won your Breeders' Crown and then come back here for a size stakes, which was unusual in those days to back up from August and back into our spring straight away. And he's still punching, you know, well above his weight. And I suppose you'd always wonder how he might have gone in the States with his racing style, but we won't perhaps see that. But And there's a chance in the barn. Interestingly enough, too, as a breeder, he'll get an opportunity in Australia. I'm not sure how many New Zealand breeders will support that horse. So there's another thing that annoys me that we don't give those horses off the track those opportunities but nonetheless he's a wonderful horse uh, and the miracle mile will be a great race and something we look forward to every year before you go though yes it is busy gavel house though just want to touch on that because back to the yearling sale very important to know that there were several weanlings pin hooked as you pointed out through our winter that were made size stakes eligible that have now turned up in this catalogue so um there's opportunities coming up with another sale in new zealand shortly 26th of may i think it is for yep. weanlings those will be nominated for the size stakes. I'll make sure of it. And they can be pin-hooked out of uh, the NZB sale and possibly made eligible for sales um, in your country, but still eligible for the New Zealand size stakes. So there's many strings to this bow. you just got to make sure you pick the right horse. And just so people are aware, this wasn't eligible. People weren't allowed, uh, eligible for this because APG is Australian Pacing Gold is what its uh, class has, and rightfully so. They they were industry-owned, so they, they needed to protect the industry. If they weren't Australian-branded, they had to be branded in Australia, they weren't eligible for the sales. Nutrient Now, a company that I do a lot with, they are more than happy to take any horses uh, they want to you know, sell. For mine, and I think Martin agrees with me, this is a little bit of a win-win because people can go to the, the weanling sales in New Zealand and purchase a horse, bring it over here and sell it through the sale here, which will then again get an Australian interest, but also New Zealand interest. Someone like a Jean Feast could buy a horse that's in Australia, but still send it back to Mark Purden as she did last year. The flip side of that is, Nutrient also will be having weanling sales that the Kiwis will be able to do the reverse because they'll be eligible for their size stakes. So to be able to change their bloodlines up. But at the end of the day, Martin, we're turning a dollar around in our industry that maybe wouldn't have been turning around two or three years ago. And it's important that we do these things, isn't it? To to keep the dollar growing, uh, going, that then can keep the industry flowing and keep more money in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So there is criteria to nominate. So let's make that clear. It's not open slather, but any Australian breeder that's got um, stock on the ground, they're thinking about the yearling sales. If they want to check the eligibility for New Zealand sales sakes, they know how to get hold of me. Um, it's New Zealand stallions, so horses that stand in New Zealand are the ones that are the ones most like Better's Delight, Sweet Lou, those types of horses that can nominate for New Zealand sales sakes with a $200 premium on top of the foal fee. So, whereas American Ideal stands in Victoria. So, but if you're not sure and if you've got a winning and you want to nominate, give us a call and I'll say yes or no and what those costs will be. But I encourage anyone that's breeding for your sale to consider the eligibility for New Zealand size stakes, which makes your product more commercial. Just a, one more quick one. Do you and Cran Delgetti go to the same shirt shop or is it, um, do you, is that just- No, a... to be fair, no, no, to be fair. This is fairly understated today, to be fair. I didn't realize I was coming on. It would have made an effort if I knew I was coming on with you. This was just thrown at me just 30 seconds ago. But um, look, we just like to look smart and uh, to keep up with Cambrai is almost impossible these days, but we're doing our best. I know, have you noticed he's start pinching our haircut though, Cambrai? Have you noticed that, that he's, uh, he, he's finally gone to the dark side and he's shaving it off? Well, it's made me increasingly more attractive and he's just following my lead, I suppose. <laughs> Martin, thank you very much. We'll know how many people have watched it till the end. Don't you worry about that. We'll get some comments on that. Martin Pearson, thank Love you. Love your work. No, I, I appreciate you coming on. We, we, we tried, as I said, tried this the other day, but I really do thank you. Um, and you won't be the last time I get you on. We'll be doing regular updates through the year. I think what you do is very, very important and we need people to be aware of it so they know how the industry is tracking and where it's actually tracking. So thank you very much for giving me your time. I know it's a pretty busy day for you guys today, mate. No, all good, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul.